Hi, my name is uh, Philippe Daniel Merrier. I'm the CEO of Colossus Printers. We're a startup from Belgium. Uh, what we do is we take people's waste and transform it into objects. So it all started about six years ago. Um, I wanted to do something for the environment and plastic waste is obviously a big problem. I didn't know anything about extrusion, but the idea was to uh, take a bottle and turn it into a filament that we could print into useful objects. So we made uh, the world's first 100% recycled uh, PET filament that is literally made from bottles. So we sold uh, part of our company to waste collectors and um, we then had to discover uh, what happened to the waste after. So a lot of people say recyclable, but they never say recycled. So these are bottles which have been washed, flaked, and then uh, post-condensed recrystallized. And we turn them into filament and to a lot of other pretty cool things. So we started working with festivals, collecting their waste and uh, selling it into little gadgets. They were like, hey guys, can you make something bigger? And so we were like, uh, no, but we'll try to find out. So we went to the market and nobody could uh, uh, make, the, the idea was to make a chair. And so if you see this chair over here, we sent that model to everyone and we were like, can you make us this chair? And they said, yeah, it'll take 150 hours and it'll cost you 8,000 euros. Who, who would be able to pay 8,000 euros for a chair? So my engineers got together and they pretty much said, you know what, we're just gonna make it ourselves. Now this is a five millimeter nozzle and it's made out of recycled uh, PET mixed with 20% carbon. So a bit like you would see in filament production and it can hold 400 kilos of weight just because of the line. If you look over there, the chair that this beautiful girl is sitting on, it's actually a, a PLA with 55% stone fill. So that's like stone dust, right? Mixed with PLA. So if you put that in nature, it will literally just disintegrate itself over time. If you take this one over here, once again, recycled PET, but with a 30% glass fiber infill. So you can add colors to it, context, and et cetera. So this was waste and it's now an object. The fact that we can print it fast makes it financially viable. If you take this chair over here, it's actually from a school in Belgium, a technical school. We printed 150 pieces of furniture for the school. So the library desk, the context, and all of the students had to gather the waste together and we used it uh, to then make these objects. Um, so when you, when you take the, the next step would be uh, tables, context. We, we work with designers because we believe that we can break down the barrier of entry uh, for designers by not just having them draw an object, but by literally selling the object. I mean, you buy one, you can sell one. If you take an injection mold, right? Uh, an injection mold for something like this would cost around 250,000 euros. Plus, we can do shapes that you can't do in injection molding. So no designer has that kind of money. This enables him to just make one and sell one. If you take, uh, the next step was these panels. So we work with a great German uh, architectural company called 3F Studio. This is two million lines of code. And the, it's made out of recycled PET. Now it's, it passes business code specs and they use computational design to not only do these cool, like this is a desk, there's a bench over there and if it's in one panel, it actually supports itself. But they actually use uh, uh, these panels to create smart facades that integrate a lot of context. We got in touch with Vision Miner because basically you can see that we're using a seven millimeter nozzle on a very long output. Now already on small printing, warping is an issue. Imagine the force that is gonna be necessary uh, for a hundred kilo object. It's, it's equivalent to around a hundred kilos of force pulling up to the sides. We tried every glue on the market that did not work. We called Vision Miner and we were like, your glue looks really cool, can we try it? And I don't know, I think it was a night in the States. Called them up, they were like, uh, what do you guys do actually? They're like, okay, that's what you're doing. They're like, all right, fine, we'll send it over. And like two days later by Express, we had the glue. We put it into operation and it's all we use on these panels. It's like a daddy's little helper, if you will. If you know it, you have already seven brims, but you still are, you know, don't want to waste uh, this much material. We put that together and, and that's how it works. So we're really grateful to, to have met them. On the other side, if you take the recycled materials, we work with everyone. So this is Oceanics uh, plastic, which is actually plastic fished from the sea. Um, and then we compound it with our partners Mitsubishi Chemical uh, into something you can sit on. Uh, here you got shoes. So these are actually uh, 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 soccer shoes oh. and it's 90% pure uh, uh, TPU. And uh, we, we had to reduce the amount of, uh, um, you see the colored parts are actually caoutchouc. So we actually now print for the shoe company furniture based out of this material. And uh, the results are quite, are quite interesting. So um, really the idea here again is to, if we, uh, when you do filament printing, filament printing is quite expensive because the material is expensive. If you take resin printing, it's about uh, $100 a kilo. 
Now, if you have to make a chair and it's going to be 20 kilos and it's going to cost you $100, even $40 a kilo, it'll never be financially viable. But when you're buying recycled pellets, your price point will be in between 2 euros and 10 euros, and your output's 20 kilo an hour. So the crazy part about it is that now, finally, this is financially viable. Uh, and we can create amazing objects by reducing plastic pollution in the world. And all these designers work independently. We're trying to create a platform to bring them together to create their jobs and industries based on the waste that is generated by their towns. Imagine the cities, imagine the, the outputs, the festivals. We, we work with all different kinds of people and we really want to empower them to take their waste and turn it into useful objects. So that's what we do here at Colossus. So the, the, the final uh, idea or point in, in the context is, since we worked with festivals, like we said before, uh, we built our printers in uh, transportable uh, uh, containers so they can ship anywhere in the world. You plug them in, it works. So for a festival, we'll literally drive the printer in, print an entire terrace, and then leave. So that's the nice part about having it in a container. So it's thinking out of the box, but in a context. You've got five square meters of print volume. And uh, of course, it's always customizable, and it can grow to any size or context you need. Uh, this is a cool uh, um, uh, concept we, we, we developed. So the idea here was to uh, take mathematical geometry. So we've got three different actual sizes. Uh, they all fit into each other. And, and the cool part about it is that this, it, now you see it as a cupboard, but it's also a chair because you can sit on it. And it only prints in 45 minutes. Uh, you can also then put them together and make a bench. Uh, you can turn it into um, a, 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 a podium uh, where you can combine all of them together and it can be put to the point. So the, the beauty of this material is fast printing and, and you know, making really useful applications on the output. And the last object we want to show you is imagine this lamp in, your, uh, in a reception desk or a context. You can play with colors, play with outputs. And this entire object was printed in around eight hours. You see them on the small printers, but on the big one, it, it changes a bit the context of what, what we can actually do. And this is maximum height at uh, one meter fifty. So yeah, so that's it. For, yeah, indeed. So thank you guys so much for your time, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, thanks again to Vision Miner for helping us keep those things on, <laughs> keeping the prints going and, and reducing the warping on the output. So cheers to that. Take care.